This program is brought to you by Grand Valley State University. Good evening. I'm Gleaves Whitney, director of the Hallenstein Center for Presidential Studies at Grand Valley, and I am also the moderator for this evening's debate. Thank you for joining us, and welcome also to our viewers of our live webcast. Now, I would like to extend a special welcome to two individuals, our founding benefactor of the center, Ralph Hallenstein, in the front row. Thank you. And also our president of Grand Valley State University, Dr. Tom Haas. In addition, let me thank the Hallenstein Center's two partners that helped make this evening possible. Uh, Dr. James Williams, Dean of the Seidman College of Business at Grand Valley. And the Reverend Fred Wooden, who, of course, is the senior pastor here at Fountain Street Church. Now, at this time, I'm going to do my little ritual. I'm going to hold up my cell phone. I'm going to show all you guys. I'm going to turn my cell phone off. <laughs> I'm going to ask you all to do the same. Thank you. Many of you in the audience will remember the famous quip from the 1980 presidential election when Ronald Reagan was running against Jimmy Carter. And he defined a recession as when your neighbor loses his job, a depression is when you lose your job, and a recovery is when the powers that be lose their jobs. Well, 80 years ago this month, the stock market took a nosedive and gave us a new vocabulary. Black Tuesday became the emblem for widespread failure in our economic system. Now, it's an event that the Hallenstein Center and Seidman and other organizations here are dedicating much of the next academic year to studying, to analyzing. The question is, to what extent was it the market that failed versus to what extent was it public policy? that failed. Now, if you Google Great Depression and Great Recession, you get 2.8 million hits, clearly a variety of viewpoints. But tonight, you're going to hear two of the best viewpoints, I think, on the opposing views of the Great Depression, the problems, the policies, and the politicians who struggled with it. Amity Schlaes and Jonathan Alter represent opposite sides of the debate over FDR's legacy. But what they share is also considerable. They both have Chicago roots. They are two of the best journalists in the country, writing with great historical depth and awareness. And they both have a passion for public debate and getting public policy right. Amity Schlaes is an award-winning syndicated columnist for Bloomberg and a senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. A writer on political economy and taxes, and a contributor to numerous television and radio shows, Ms. Schlaes has been called, quote, a leading historian of 20th century finance. She is formerly a columnist for the Financial Times, a member of the Wall Street Journal editorial board, where she was featured as an op-ed writer. She also has published in National Review, New Republic, Foreign Affairs, The American Spectator, and she is the author, as many of you know, of The Forgotten Man, a new history of the Great Depression. Peggy Noonan called this book epic, wholly original. George Will called it a fresh appraisal that Americans now need to know. Amity, thank you for joining us tonight. Jonathan Alter is an award-winning columnist and a senior editor for Newsweek. Since 1991, his column has examined media, social issues, global issues, and politics. And going back to the 1980s, he's covered seven presidential elections. During his presidency, Bill Clinton was quoted as saying, Alter bites me in the tail sometimes. Actually, Clinton used another word. I'm using a euphemism. But at least he knows what we're trying to do. Mr. Alter is also a contributing correspondent for NBC News, appearing on Today, NBC Nightly News, and Meet the Press. As many of you know, he's the author of The Defining Moment, FDR's 100 Days and the Triumph of Hope, which historian Alan Brinkley called rich and perceptive. And Richard Norton Smith, who is no stranger to these parts, called it required reading for every president, 
every student of leadership, and anyone who appreciates narrative history at its finest. John, thank you for joining us tonight. I got to know these two at lunch a little bit better today, and I can tell you off script that they go way back. Both of their mothers were extremely active in the politics in Chicago, but neither went to jail. <laughs> John and Amity attended rival high schools in Chicago, rival colleges on the East Coast, and they continue to rival each other in the press, over the airwaves, and of course here on stage tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our two distinguished guests. <clears throat> 